Oh, it is a good day to be a Zelda fan on a Tuesday. What is up, everybody? I'm Alex Noramaki, and I need to talk about what we just saw. For the uninitiated, we Zelda players have been waiting patiently for six years for a new Zelda title. It's a very long time, even for non-Zelda people, but especially for us, it might as well be a lifetime. And Nintendo was loving enough to drop us 10 minutes of gameplay from the newest installment in the series, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And I sat there intently on my couch, eating my oatmeal, feet up on the table, watching this gameplay. And let me tell you something, it is so exciting. I am so excited. May 12th cannot come fast enough, and, and I, just, I just wanna talk about what we have seen. I wanna talk about it, so that's what we're gonna do. Sit down, you're not doing nothing, unless you are, in which case, just listen to me. I'm gonna tell you all the good things. And if you haven't watched it, I'm gonna put the link down to watch it below in the description, okay? Okay, let's go. So first and foremost, A.G. Alanuma basically said there aren't gonna be any more delays. And he said that by saying the development for Tears of the Kingdom is officially complete. Nothing else we have to worry about. The day is set. There will not be any pushbacks because development is done. That in and of itself makes me feel good because as a long time, lifetime even gamer, I'm always afraid that um, the release date gets pushed back because of developmental problems. So that definitely makes me feel a little bit better. Now I can actually put it on my calendar and I can tell my boss that I'm taking the day off, so. <laughs> Eiji Aonuma himself said that this is not the same Hyrule as Breath of the Wild. It is, but it isn't. It's the same map, but there's so much more going on. There are different enemies, There, there's different landscapes, and there's different landmarks, and then of course there's giant hunks of land floating in the sky, which we already knew that. We've seen two different trailers. We knew that was coming. It's what you can do on those islands that was shown quite a bit in this gameplay video, and it's... I was not expecting to get the amount of information out of this video that I was given, because we were given a lot. But before I get to that, I just wanna celebrate something super duper small, super mi minuscule, very minor, but I'm really happy that the, um, the horse riding music from Breath of the Wild is coming back. You can kind of hear it at the beginning of that video and that just makes me smile because I love that music. So um, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Let's talk about these abilities that they showcase. Link has a bunch of new abilities and I would imagine it's attributed to his um, his pretty little arm. That's still gonna be a nightmare for me to cosplay though I do have ideas. Because when, whenever they're showing off those abilities, there is no sight of a Sheikah Slate, which is important, right? Why is there no Sheikah Slate? We had a Sheikah Slate at the end of Breath of the Wild, but that's to be left up to plot, I'm sure, which they really did not show. The first ability that they showed off was called Recall, and that's how they showed us getting up to these floating sky islands. Basically, Recall allows you to imbue any object or something to basically rewind in time, right? And so in the example Alanuma gave us, he used recall on a piece of floating sky island rock that had fallen down to the ground to basically get up on top of it and then ride it as it rewound to where it was floating up so he could get up to the sky islands. I think that is awesome. But I do have to question the other uses you can have for recall because they wouldn't just give us a disability to only be used in this one instance. That just seems silly. The best way that I can think of that I would want to be able to use recall is if, um, I'm a terrible driver who was taught by the Texas education system and I accidentally broke my vehicle. Could I, could I fix it? It's giving Josuke Higashikata's ability in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, you know, where he can punch things and then like fix them with his stand. It's giving the same thing, but like, can I be as creative as Jojo was with, re you see what I'm saying? The next ability that they showed off was Fuse. And I do believe this is probably gonna be the most important one of all of the abilities Link has, or at least the ones that we've seen, right? Fuse, as the name implies, is used for fusing things. <laughs> what The way they used it is um, to fuse weapons, actually. Um, in, the, in the video, Link picked up a stick and then fused it with a giant boulder, which turned the boulder smaller and turned the stick and boulder into like a makeshift hammer, which Link then proceeded to beat the crap out of an enemy with. I think that's dope, but the problem is, is that I have the brain cell and the brain power of like a toddler some days. So I'm really gonna have to focus and take my ADHD medicine to come up with some ideas to fuse things, but you know, we'll, we'll be fine. <laughs> but the question that comes with that is, can we use it on enemies? Like, can I like fuse some sort of explosive to a Bacoblin's back and then just watch it 
burn. I, I'm just, listen, he said be creative. I'm just the head of the curve. Don't judge us. But the other way that they used fuse was to actually fuse arrows with materials you pick up off of defeated enemies and off the ground within the wilds, right? And so it gives all new uses to these same materials that we were picking up in Breath of the Wild. Because originally, all you could do with a keese eyeball was use it as monster parts to create elixirs and things in Breath of the Wild. But he showed off that you can actually fuse a keese eyeball with an arrow and it would turn into a homing arrow. Do you know how funny that is? He put an eyeball on the arrow and now the arrow can see what it's supposed to kill. That, <laughs> I gotta hand it to Nintendo. They are always really good with the puns. You just have to know where to look and know how to understand them. The implications of this are amazing. And I just, I cannot wait to see what all kinds of foolishness I'm gonna do. It's probably gonna be another rewind of, um. All those days we tried to use bomb arrows on Death Mountain and died instantly because we blew ourselves up. There's going to be some trial and error, but I'm ready for it. The next ability that they showed off was called Ultra Hand. And this is really how I know that he's using his arm instead of a Sheikah Sleep because it's called Ultra Hand. Hello? He uses this ability. It's kind of like Fuse, but for bigger objects. And so the examples that he gave us was basically building a raft to get across a long or deep side of a river that you couldn't swim across with your stamina, right? And he took these logs that he saw on the ground and he used Ultra Hand to fuse them together into a raft shape. And then he used these really cool, just hanging out on land, perfectly recharged battery powered fans to attach it to the boat to make it like a, what do they call those things? They use them like all the time in Florida in the swamp. So it's like wind boats. He made one of those. And don't think I'm overlooking the fact that there was a fan that was basically solar powered, soaking up sun and repowering itself just on the ground. We gonna talk about that, but that, 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 don't think it, don't think it passed me up, okay? But yeah, that's how Ultra Hand is used. He was saying, you saw us show off a giant freaking car in the second trailer. Here's how you make it, but you're gonna have to build it yourself but have fun with it is what he was saying he's like and get creative all those weird kids we used to hate because they were super angry that nobody else understood physics but them i bet they're having the time of their lives right now still hate you because i gotta be in physics but i'm happy you're having fun the final ability that they showed off at link has in this video was called ascent it's kind of my favorite one honestly as the name suggests it allows you to ascend but with a twist he said that if you are in any room or space that has a ceiling of some kind. You can use Ascend to basically swim through the air, up and then through the ceiling and come out the roof on the other side. Now we did see this, we did see Link do this in the first Tears of the Kingdom trailer. We were just like, holy, holy shit, how is he coming out of the ceiling and the roof and how the hell does that work? And we had all kinds of speculation. Ascend is how. And I'm gonna be real with you, it's dope, but I have to imagine what kind of situations I would find myself in where I'd be like, oh great, I need to use Ascend to get out of this. That man did scare us a little bit. He was like, now Matt, what if you're in a cage? What if we imprison you? Why would I be imprisoned, Aonuma? What's going on? Jail? For Link? What is this, Gerudo Desert? Whatever's going on, um, Ascend was really cool. The example he gave was that he went into the cave of a mountain and literally swam up into the ceiling of that cave. And there was a solid like 50 feet of rock between the ceiling of that cave and the top of the mountain above it. And Link swam through all that rock. So there doesn't seem to be like a thickness of ceiling limit. I mean, there might be, it might just have to be like a hundred feet. Who the hell knows? But that's really cool because I hate climbing because it always seems to rain when I want to climb. And yes, I'm taking shots. That's very disrespectful and I know I'm being targeted. Now, I want to talk about what everybody else is talking about. You know we have to speak about it. Y'all saw it, we all saw it, but if you didn't see it, let me tell you. There are there are these enemies that Link was fighting when they were showcasing how he could use fuse and everything and other stuff. Giant things that they called constructs. They're little robos with like energy flowing between their limbs that kind of give them life and shape and they have one giant eye and they're kind of robotic and kind of ancient looking, but perfectly functional. They're just called constructs. And we're like, okay, cool, construct, robotic, must be Sheikah made, no? No. If you didn't notice, when Aonuma killed it, he went to go pick up the things that, you know, enemies drop parts and whatever. And he picked up soldiers something or another, but then he picked up a Zonai core. Yeah, you heard me. Zonai. 
If you don't know what the zone I are, I got you. We're gonna educate you today. I'll put the link down to that in the description as well. Nintendo just confirmed that the zone I have at least something to do with the plot of Tears of the Kingdom. We have been speculating the Zonai for years. There have been very few signs of them in Breath of the Wild outside of the Zonai armor set, but their ruins have been around Hyrule in certain places, especially in the Faron region. Now, we could sit here and speculate all day about what that means. Are the Zonai evil? Are the Zonai good? Are the Zonai asking for help? Are the Zonai trying to kill us? Are the Zonai the ones imprisoning me, Aonuma? You think I didn't hear that shit? But it makes, it makes you, it makes your mind race. And oh my God, I cannot wait to see what the Zona community comes up with. We have a little bit over a month. I don't know how much thinking we can do in a month, but you know, we're a very, we're a, we're a hard working bunch, <laughs> this we know. Um, but then, but then going forward off of that, that was an enemy construct. I don't know if y'all noticed this, but there were non-enemy constructs in a couple of scenes. And both times, Link would pass by or come into close quarters with one of these non-enemy constructs and they wouldn't even pay attention to Link. In both cases, one was on the side of that river he was crossing and the other one was inside of a cave. And in both cases, those constructs looked to be almost foraging, but they didn't pay any attention to Link. They didn't turn around when they heard him coming. They, they just pretty much ignored him, which allows me to speculate that these constructs are just living on this island or these islands. And if those enemy constructs were Zonai made, then it stands to reason that these non-enemy constructs are also Zonai made. And if that's the case, there's two thoughts I'm having. Either the Zonai are here, well, three thoughts. Either the Zonai are here, number one, and these are their worker bots out doing what worker bots do, protect, forage, whatever else we'll see them doing. Number two, the Zonai are dead, but their machinery lives on doing the things they're supposed to do, protect, forage, whatever else. Or three, those robots are the Zonai, which is probably not true because we have that Zonai armor set and it's very barbaric looking. Zonai are involved in at least these Sky Islands. And I would wager it's probably the first two choices. One of the two, right? Because it's the same thing with all the Sheikah technology. Granted, the Sheikah aren't dead. They all live in Kakariko Village. They're perfectly fine and thriving. They're having kids, but the Zonai might not be. The Zonai might actually just be gone. We didn't see any trace of them besides old, old overgrown ruins and a barbarian set you only get in the DLC, I think. And that's it. Take with that what you will, but that's where my mind is headed and I'm, oh, I'm excited. And another thing that Aonuma did say is that enemies have all kinds of weapons. And as you saw, one of the enemy constructs Link was made to fight in this video was holding a fan. And he didn't directly hit Link. He just swung the fan and basically Korok leafed Link off the island. The enemies have useful tools that do things other than directly damage you. That means that in true Zelda fashion, we have a different type of puzzle. We have puzzle battles. We have battles where we have to be creative in the ways that we defeat them. Now granted, I we all know me, and if you don't, I'm about to tell you, I'm, I'm of the opinion that I should be able to brute force my way through anything. And I'm pretty sure if I swing fast enough, he's not gonna flee me off a rock. But if we're being smart about this, we can do some really cool stuff, you know? And we're adding layers. I think people were a little bit worried after the second trailer that this would be kind of bare bones-ish and just add some stuff onto Breath of the Wild plot and some mechanics, but we're adding a whole lot here, it seems. And finally, just some other observations I was having. Um, you fall through the sky just like Link did in Skyward Sword. Did anybody else notice that? When he fell off that sky island, he threw them arms and legs out almost instinctually, just like Skyward Sword Link. That may or may not have anything to do with anything else. It just made me giggle and that's valid, okay? And finally, um, y'all saw that after he landed, there was a Bokoblin being carried through the sky by one of those unnamed flying creatures. And by the way, in my earlier video about Tears of the Kingdom after the trailer, I did discuss what I thought those early flying creatures really could be. But y'all saw that, right? They're working together. That's not good. Never before have 
minions of evil in a Zelda game worked together this much. That's a little bit scary. So yeah, those are just some thoughts that I had after watching this gameplay video. I've watched it probably five times already and twice was on half speed so I could look through everything. Um, let me know down in the comments anything that you saw, anything you're excited about, what's your favorite ability they showcased, any thoughts you have. I want to hear it all. Put it down in the comments. I'm ready to receive and I'm ready for <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom to release. I will be spending part of my next paycheck, or not next paycheck, but part of one of my next two paychecks on that Zelda Switch, or at least the Pro Controller. That's all I got for y'all. If you like this video, let me know. Like, please, subscribe if you have not. We talk about all kinds of things here, either gaming related at my desk or not gaming related on the couch. Um, you're gonna wanna be a part of it. Be a part of the discussion in the Penguin Village. It means a lot to me and it means more to YouTube algorithm wise. And I will see you next time, you guys. Okay? Okay. Bye!